Okay, we're looking at this time at a practical about resistivity. And the properties, <clears throat> well, how to find resistivity and how to um, do an experiment to find resistance and hence resistivity, because I'm sure from the theory you're aware of this equation in which the resistance of material is proportional to the length, directly proportional to the length actually, and inversely proportional to the cross-sectional area. And that um, constant proportionality is known as resistivity. So we're going to try and, try and find this by working out the in two ways really. Experiment one is going to look at the length and how the resistance varies with the length and experiment two is going to look at how the area changes um, the resistance and then from those we'll work out the resistivity. Good, so how are we going to work this out um, to start with? Well, first of all, with all things we need a battery pack and then what we're looking to have are long pieces of wire. I'll just put a dot there. So a long piece of wire, slightly um, squiggly line. <clears throat> and we're looking to measure the current that goes through this piece of wire when you put the contact at different positions along. At different positions along here, L. Well, um, uh, when we've worked out the, uh, the current, what we'll also do is work out the potential difference. So I suppose I'll draw it here, the voltmeter. It's going to be attached to wherever this point is and the base of the piece of wire. And as this moves along, we're going to get readings for volt, voltage and current and therefore work out the resistance in accordance with the equation. Resistance is voltage divided by the current. So this is quite straightforward, I'd say. <clears throat> what we're looking to start with is what well, we're changing the length. So with our table of results, we're going to look for length in meters. It's got to be pretty long. Length is. I've done this experiment. So there is, it gives a voltage in volts. <clears throat> but you don't really need to repeat that voltage because actually that stays quite stable. What doesn't stay stable, of course, is the current in amps. So we need to do that once, twice, and then an average. Only once and twice because actually the meter readings we're using are so accurate that by the time you get to the third time it's pretty much identical. And then finally, of course, you want the resistance in ohms. And there is our table of results and that's what we're going to I'll show you how that's set up in a minute but I'll probably explain experiment two straight away and that is we're looking at changing the cross-sectional area of this piece of wire so the same setup again but this time fix the length off, and then we're going to substitute in for here different areas, or if you like, diameters. And once again, let me just do that there, um, it, I mean, let me just show you this as well actually, you could put the voltmeter here, and that would be the same as that. I'm just taking the voltage between this point and that, which is in contact with. So that's probably a bit neater when we experimentally set this thing up. And for the same fixed length, I'm going to substitute into there different pieces of wire. Good, the table of results is a little bit more complicated for this one. We'll have the, um, <clears throat> we'll have the diameter. We will have the, and I'll try and do this as small as possible. We'll have the voltage in volts. Of course, we'll have the current in amps, the resistance in ohms. And then what I'm looking for is one over the area because I think that resistance is inversely proportional to area. So in my table of results, I'm looking for one over the area. 
And I'm just thinking, I didn't actually repeat any of those um, <clears throat> because they were giving pretty stable values. There's also one column as well called the SWG. This is a standard wire gauge. It's an engineering symbol. Uh, it's an engineering technique to tell you specifically how thick a wire is because they're all extruded through when they're made. They're extruded through uh, a die, a die which makes their cross-sectional area very um, precise. So you could actually take that number and infer from it the diameter and then infer from the area. But we're actually going to measure the diameter because I think that's quite a useful technique. So there are the two experiments. One with varying length is our independent variable, and the other one will be the diameter. <coughs> right, let's look at the experimental setup. We have, luckily, this board. And on this board we have, I'll just make sure we can see the board. We have a series of wires suspended along here. One, two, three, four, there is no fifth one with their SWG numbers written down as well. 28, 30, 32, 34, there is no 36, so I'll just take that one out. <clears throat> and along here, I'm going to place a meter ruler. So the meter ruler is able to measure, well, I'll be able to know how long, 10 centimeters, 20, 30, 40, etc., etc. until I, I can go all the way to the meter, but it's just out of shot. Good. <clears throat> For my first test, I'm going to have my power supply, my cell. And I'm going to leave this in shot so you can see how I'm setting up the first one. I'm then going to have my. Oops, wait a minute. <clears throat> going to bring it into shot. <clears throat> Here is my ammeter. I might put it at the top there, just so it's in the same position as it is in this diagram here, it's at the top. So I'm going from my battery across to my ammeter. And of course, remembering here that because it's an ammeter, you have to place it in A. That's, let's see if we can see that a bit more carefully. It says A here, so in amps and com. So it's going, so those are the two terminals. And I'm looking to work out a current, so I need it's A with the bar, so it's DC current, not alternating current. And I'm not really going to get more than 2 amps, so therefore the 2 I've placed there. Good, let me just leave that just out of shot. And then what completes my circuit is this piece of wire here, which will be there. And I've got one of these nice little probes, so therefore I'm able to just touch the wire in a certain place. And I will get a current flowing around that circuit. <clears throat> Good. <clears throat> the last piece of apparatus is a voltmeter. A voltmeter in parallel, and like I've shown here, the connection point there and the connection point here. And so therefore, when I turn this on, this will give me a voltage, and this one here will give me a current. What I'll do is now I'll move them side by side. So you can see the experimental setup. Good. So that probe there, as soon as I touch the wire, just move that up a bit, then you'll see instantly readings become available. My voltage and my current. And as I move further away, so those readings change, because hopefully what we're seeing is an increase in resistance. So for that, which is reasonably similar, we're getting a smaller current coming through. I would say that once we go move along, um, I think moving along every 10 centimeters is the way forward. Moving all the way along and then all the way back. What's important here is that if you hold it at a very short distance, hold it for too long, you'll probably notice these numbers are bouncing and changing. And the problem is, is that that, because it has such low resistance because of the short length, it's actually heating up. And so heat is becoming a big option. <clears throat> Sorry, a big variable here. 
there is actually a dependence on, re resisti on resistance of temperature. And also, it's going to be really hot to the touch, so watch out you don't damage yourself there. Also, you can counteract that by putting a little bit less voltage across it. However, we merely just move across the results. Quite straightforward. Similarly, when we're doing area, we pick a length and then we move from that position from one wire to another wire to another wire and so on. Of course, each time you move, you need to move both of them. So for the next bit of wire and the next bit of wire. And it's quite hard to read from here and go, oh, the resistance must be changing. Of course the resistance is changing, but it's hard to work out which way it's doing. So just have faith in those readings. And then when the results, when you do the processing, the right answer should pop out. <clears throat> of course, <clears throat> when you're doing length, you need to make sure that you keep the area the same. And it probably helps if you keep the area quite large when you do length, because then that's reducing the resistance. You're not having the set, you're not having much of a heating effect. Similarly, when you're doing area and you're moving both of these together. It's probably better if you try the longest length possible so you have the largest resistance and then heat doesn't have an effect upon it. Good. Let me move that to one side and show you some of the results. <coughs> oh. <coughs> I'll bring that back in shot because there's one last thing to show you about that. But first of all, there are the results for the length versus resistance. So I went from the longer length to the shorter length. The voltages didn't change by, they weren't fluctuating much. The currents were, hence I took the repeats and an average, and then I worked out the resistance. And you can see here, as the length increases, so does the resistance increase. SWG was 28, which meant a diameter of 0.37. What are you going to do with those results? Well, and I'm going to sketch in quite no, use another bit of paper. <clears throat> because we thought said that resistance is directly proportional to the length here, I could rewrite that as resistance equals rho over A times L. So if I were to plot the resistance against the length. And I should get a nice line of straight fit, uh, sorry, a straight line showing direct proportionality where the gradient is rho over the area, the resistivity over area. So if I take my gradient and multiply by the area, the cross-sectional area, I will find my resistivity this way. So you can try that with the data and see if that makes sense. Next data. <coughs> Here we have the SWG numbers, hence the diameter which I measured, and therefore the resistance. <clears throat> this is all taken at 0 0.6 meters, which is my, uh, which is the length I chose. A control variable, and then I've worked out the area 10 to the minus 8 here, um, because otherwise I'd have huge numbers of zeros, and then finally 1 over the area. I mean, bearing in mind here, of course, I think it's obvious to say that in order to move from diameter to area, I need to um, take the diameter, divide by 2, and put it into meters. I need to then square that and times it by pi in order to achieve the area. <clears throat> and then we have 1 over the area, of course. So if you are, I'll let you have a chance to copy that down. But what are we going to do about to see whether it is an inverse proportionality and how to work out the resistivity in turn? Well, we know that R is rho L over A, which is the same as saying rho L times 1 over A. So if I were to plot resistance against 1 over the area, I should get a straight line in which my gradient will equal rho L. So therefore, merely take my gradient, divide it by the length, 0 0.6, and that should give me the resistivity of the material. Good. 
last bit, <clears throat> probably worth mentioning, would be how to work out the diameter of the wire. There are the wires. What I've got here is a micrometer. And what I need to do with the micrometer, first of all, is close it up and see if there's a zero error. In this instance, there is no zero error. What I'm going to do is just come down a little bit and then show you how this works up close. Just adjusting the stand. <clears throat> Okay, so there we can see it much closer now. Just get the focus on the micrometer. So we have here, I've closed it up. You can see that actually there is no zero error because zero lines directly up with that marker point there. So unwind it, remembering the ratchet's the way to tighten it. And I'm gonna place in, first of all, this piece of wire here. Place it into the groove. Close it up, and you can see here that I have a reading there. Oops, let's try that again. Of about, it's not quite at zero point five. It's not quite at the zero point five position on the main vessel. So what we're having here is zero point. 3.5, just above that, 0.37 of a millimeter. Of course, it makes sense to try it in three different positions because you don't know if there's any kinks going on. Three positions, average, and that's what you saw there. And then we can move to a different piece of wire and it's obviously going thinner here. We notice this is 0 0.2728. And that's how we use our micrometer. Okay, hope that makes sense.